Welcome to Whitman's R9 Placing Program Part 1, Creating. Setting up a placing program in your TEACH program consists of two parts. Creating the placing program, which is this video, and then using it in your TEACH program, the Part 2 video. To begin, touch the Edit button and then the Text tab to enter the text editor. Touch the Bar menu button to open the bar menu, then select the Placing Program button at the bottom. In the Placing Program screen, select the Add New Placing Program button to create a new placing program. We can see at the top of this window indicators that there are seven windows involved in creating a placing program. And we are in the first window titled Axis Selection. These indicators will turn green after we have visited each of the windows. In the first item, we can name the placing program. I will name this one Placing Program 001. Next, we can select which axes we want to be involved in the placing program. After that, we can select the placing order. This is the order in which the stack will be built. In a few moments, I will display a visual aid which will help explain this and some other important concepts of the placing program. Choose the Next button to move to window number 2 named First Position. This visual aid will help explain some of the important concepts of the placing program. You should consider where to place the first part of the stack. Any of these corner positions could actually be the first part, and depending on where you start, that will determine whether the axes need to move in a positive or a negative direction to place the next part. All distances between parts are measured from the first part. In this visual, the first part is represented by the red cube, and the z-axis will have to move in a positive direction to reach the next part. But, if the first part is here instead, the z-axis will have to travel in a negative direction to reach the next part. I will need to remember this later when I teach where the next part is on that row. Because the y-axis counts positive to travel downward and negative to travel up, the y-axis will usually have to travel in a negative direction to specify the distance between the first part and the part above it. The placing program is typically executed once per cycle, so each part placed on the stack represents one shot from the molding machine. The placing order determines the order in which the stack will be built. The default ZXY shown here will place parts along the Z axis first and once that row is completed the X will then be moved to the next row. Once the current level is completed the Y will be adjusted to the next level. Another example of placing order is XZY, in which the parts will be placed along the X axis first, then the Z, and finally the Y. Once your stack is completed, in the future you may decide to change the number of parts on one of the rows. If you do that, the robot will keep the distance from the first part to the end part in the row the same and just recalculate the distance in between the parts on that row. If you don't want it to do that, 
you can check this box here, keep gap constant, and it will keep the spacing in between individual parts the same, and will just leave additional parts that you remove off the end of the row. In this first column, you will specify the position of the first part. Selecting the box for the axis will allow you to move the axis using the manual controls to the first part position. If you already know the position you want to use, you can select the value window and type in the position you want, then select OK. If the value is different than the current position of the axis, the control will change to a go-to control and you can use it to bring the axis to the position you just entered. You must hold a go-to control until the robot stops at the program position. Otherwise, the robot will stop when you release the button. I'm going to finish entering my first part positions and moving the robot to that position. On the Y, I already know my position. I want it to be 353. And then I'll use the go to control to move the axis to that position. This is now the first part position. On this next column here, I'll enter the number of parts on each axis that the stack will contain. For this example, I will leave only one part on the Z axis use three parts on the x-axis and two parts on the y. This will create a row of three parts along the x-axis with a second layer of three on top of those. So two layers on the y-axis. Touch the next button to move to window three, second position. I now have two columns, distance to second position and distance to end position. You can use either of these to describe the dimensions of your stack. And once again, this visual aid will help to explain these. For each axis, you can specify the distance from the first part to the second part in the row, the second position. Or you can specify the distance from the first part placing position to the end part in the row. You may use whichever method you like for each axis. Choose the box next to the axis that you want to adjust. You may now use the manual controls to teach the robot the distance from the first part to the second part or the end part. If you already know the dimensions you want, choose the value box to enter the value and touch OK to enter it. If the robot's current position does not match the value you entered, the control will change to a go to control, which you may touch to move the robot to the entered value. You must hold the go to control until the axis stops at the value, otherwise the axis will stop when you release the control. I'm going to finish entering my positions and moving the robot to that position. I know that on the Y, I'm going to enter the second position, which is minus 135.9 from the first part position. So I'm going to enter one 35.9 and then the negative sign okay that's my distance to my second position and then use the go to control to move the axes to that and hit okay once you are finished with this window touch the next button to move to window 4 named displacement in this window you can specify a distance that each level, the last axis and the axis order, usually the y-axis, can be offset 
from the level before it or below it. The entire level will be offset by this amount. The offset can be on the x-axis, the z-axis, or both. Once you are done, touch the next button to move to window 5, named Options. The first option here is the 3D Movement button. If this box is checked, the axes will move from wherever the robot currently is to the next position in the stack as a 3D move. It will be necessary to select one of the 3D options below it. Curved over the box will move the X and Z axis, or the first two axis, axes in the axis order, in a 3D move until they reach the position, then move the last axis in the axis order, usually Y, down to the stack. This is intended for when you are stacking inside a box, although this can be used without a box. Straight line in the box will move all axes in a straight line 3D move to the stack. The selection Define the Axis Order allows you to select the order the axes will use to approach the stack. If the 3D option above is not selected, each axis will move one at a time in this order to reach the stack. If 3D is used, this selection will still determine which axis is the last axis when filling a box. Select the next button to move to window 6 named Box Height. In this window, you may select whether the robot should avoid the top rim of a box when approaching the stack, especially if using the 3D option. If selected, specify the box height distance relative to the first part placing position. When finished, select the next button to proceed to window 7 named Summary. In this window, you may review the choices you have made. You may at any time use the back buttons to move backward through the windows to change your choices. When you are satisfied with your choices, select the Create button to save the placing program. You will now be returned to the placing program window where your new placing program will now appear in the list of available placing programs. To test your placing program, well, you will need to insert it into your TEACH program. For this procedure, use the video R9 Placing Program Part 2 using in text editor. Thank you for watching. Here at Whitman, the world of innovation.